It is Friday, March 22nd, Freaky Friday, as we say here on Menace to Sports. I am Zach Smith, your host, with my co-host, Chris Drew. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I love Fridays. Going to have too. a fun weekend because spring break officially kicked off. And here's a fun, here you want to know personal life fun fact? I do. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but I have my kids for spring break this week, and I don't put my personal stuff out there because I'm not... I'm not one to sit here and talk shit about my ex-wife, but she got this notion that like spring break starts Monday. It doesn't start Friday, blah, blah, blah. Like every sane person in the world knows when you get out of school on Friday, spring, it's spring break. Spring break. So this, of course, we have to do like a legal battle on when does spring break start? Because fuck, it's psychosis, I guess. But I didn't realize her attorney got involved. And I, I'm like, who is this guy? Because he's not a divorce attorney. Like he's, he's just an attorney that is dabbling in divorce in family yeah, law hanging around so i looked him up and this motherfucker was the attorney who brought the lawsuit against ohio state against the dr strauss guy for sexually assaulting people oh he's the one that sued the fuck out of ohio state like rallied the troops got all these victims together and to say they got sexually assaulted and i don't know anything about the case it might have happened it might not have happened i know the courts just threw it out mm -hmm. but i think it's so coincidental that the guy that sued Ohio State and tried to like do this whole big thing, whether right or wrong, is now representing my ex-wife. No, nah, that is nuts. Isn't that wild? <laughs> that is there's like I just I wanted to share it because that's fucking wild to me. There's no way around like, it. Like I couldn't get Ohio State. I'm gonna get Zach Smith. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get Zach instead. But yeah, yeah, good week, good week. Great week. Cool. I mean, great week. Killed it in the gym. Um, really, really addicted to this shit right now. Good. So had a great week. Gonna have a great weekend. With or without my older two, I don't know, which is it's all good. I'm going to have them for the rest of the week. So I'm excited, man. It's going to be yeah. fun, fun week next Dang, week. To wait this late for a legal battle has got to be frustrating. Well, it's like, it, what if you were leaving to go out of town? Well, we would have just left. That's what would have happened. Yeah. Um, but it's I'm not trying to talk about it. Right, I, I don't right, right. like I to just, put I it out publicly, you. but it's just. Welcome to my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. But how's your week been, Chris? Uh, good, man. Made it to another week. Just obviously doing the show. Excited. Staying in the gym. Doing the, doing the fun, exciting stuff. I don't know. Nothing really crazy happened. Akron lost to Creighton yesterday. I will tell you, in a seven-game series, Akron wins. <laughs> that, and that's the issue with the NCAA tournament. Bro. Shout out to Oakland, though. Taking <laughs> down the Wildcats. I can't wait to talk about them. Bro. I can't either because I went to Kentucky for two years. My ex-wife graduated from Kentucky, so my kids are Kentucky fans. Both of my brothers are Kentucky fans, and I'm just the asshole who rooted for Oakland the whole time because we all were together. And my son, I mean, my son wouldn't talk to me after the game. Oh, he was he, tight? No, he went straight downstairs and went to bed. I was like, I was like, hey, bub, you good? And he, he just looked at me and walked downstairs. Yeah, that heartbreak hurts. Well, because I was talking shit to him the right. whole game. Right, right, absolutely. I get it. The hey. women start today? Women start. There we go. I didn't yeah. even know that. Women start today? Shout out to women's college basketball. But anyways. We'll talk about the in the, that in the show. Yes. Lukey, let him know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Bro, this is just because I saw it and I, like, had to get a, a little bit of a, a laugh out of it. Do you remember that police officer that um, slept with the entire precinct? Oh, yeah. She got a half a million dollar settlement from this city. Why? Don't, don't know. <laughs> what a world we live in. Tax dollars. You, you could... You can just fuck an entire precinct and get half a million dollars. <laughs> what a world. I mean, what? Yeah, dog. That's a fucked up world we live in right there. That this woman fucked a bunch of dudes while married, cheated on her husband, fucked all kinds of dudes at work. It's clearly against HR policy. And then in the end gets paid half a million dollars for it. Yeah, from the city. Taxpayers paid her half a million dollars to spread her legs and take cock. She was already hitting it on a job. You feel me? Like she was already on the job with tax dollars. Like, didn't she already have enough fun? Do we have to pay her too? Yeah. She was taking cop cock like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild world we live in. It's truly fuck the police. Fuck the police. She was really trying. She was fucking the police. <laughs> she she lived it. Um, she they made NWA she, proud. She did. I don't think that's what they envisioned when they uh, <laughs> dropped the song. But fuck. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it, I guess. Um, some NCAA tournament news just before we get into that that Oakland and Kentucky game. Dan Hurley speaking up uh, about the transfer portal being open. He said it should not be open right now. The fact on Monday, the best week of college basketball, that it's open, it's bizarre. With the NCAA changing, is there a, a fix or a proper schedule to the transfer portal? Well, it's, I mean, I mean, to be fair, 
same for college football, right? Mm -hmm. Before the playoffs, there is a portal window. After the regular season, before the playoffs. Do I agree with it? This one I don't agree with, right? I agree with that one because there's a winter semester coming up. But also, like, the teams that play in the playoffs, they get a 30-day or a two-week window after their game. Right, but but my point is, you kind of have to have that one because Mm -hmm. if you're going to transfer, you want to be able to enroll in the winter, right? And if you wait till after the bowl game, there's a chance you can't get there in time, wherever you're going to go. This one's bizarre. Like, spring semester's not over till, like, May. Yeah. Like, just... Finish the tournament and open the portal. It's clearly not well thought out, but are we surprised? Are we surprised the NCAA did something that's not well thought out? Literally never. I mean, literally, when he said it's bizarre, I'm like, have you been here your whole life? It's certainly bizarre, but that's par for the course with these motherfuckers. Also, like the tampering implications of the NCAA tournament and the portal being open and going on at the same time. Literally everybody, they all... Or staying in the same city. Yeah. They're all at the same place. Yeah. They're all on the same courts. They're seeing around each other. It's like, damn, they it, like the tampering, oh, all yeah. time high. Oh, yeah. You just, I just envisioned someone going to get it like a breakfast sandwich at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. One of the players, he's like, man, I'm hungry. I'm going to get a breakfast sandwich. And then Calipari's behind him like, I'll pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, oh, no, just trying to, you know, pass it. Or what, what's it called? Pay, pass, it pay it forward. Try to pay it forward. That's all. He just happens to be one of the best players in college basketball. It just it just feels like tamper. It's just too easy to tamper. But the NCAA, I don't know if they'll ever be able to fix it. I think that honestly, like when the Big Ten and SEC kind of become their own league, because that's what's going to happen. It's going to be on them to put together guardrails in place for transferring. Yeah, I don't know how they'll enforce that. I mean, I guess I don't know. I, I don't know what they'll do. I don't know how they could do it. Um, it's it's a train wreck. That's the NCAA, though. I yeah. mean, that should be that should be their 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 company slogan, like NCAA. We are a train wreck. <laughs> and the things they want to fix are, you know, more tournament teams. 64 is not enough. <laughs> Certainly not enough. Yeah. But no. every time you have an Oakland beat a Kentucky, it's like, I'd love to see more of that. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> that was awesome. You know, I was six for six in the first six games. Uh, I forget who my, the seventh game was. Damn it. But I was six for I didn't watch any basketball because we had the show, mm-hmm. all this stuff going on. I had to take my daughter to volleyball. Then I had to take my son to physical therapy. And when I dropped him off at physical therapy, I had like 45 minutes. I was like, you know what? There's a sports bar right next door. I'm going to walk over there, have a beer, and watch basketball for the first time. Oh, hell yeah. And I forget the game, but my the team I picked, I walk in for like four minutes left. They're up 17. I sat down, and 10 minutes later, they didn't score one point. <laughs> and the other team Dude, went on a 17-0 run. College basketball droughts are crazy. It was nuts. And then like, I ended up losing my first game of, of my bracket. And I was like, damn, I just need to not watch, I guess. B. John Robinson still has a perfect bracket. Does he really? Yeah. It's crazy. That's nuts. So shout out to Bijan for uh for knowing ball. But I, I honestly, I'd be surprised if he watched I mean, basketball. Come on, either. knowing ball. He didn't know what the fuck Oakland was. Yeah, that Oakland shit is crazy. Crazy. That Oakland shit is crazy. And you picked Oakland or no? No, no, no. Oh, uh, that was the game. Oh, okay. no, I lost two games yesterday. It was I can't remember who the fuck it was. I, the, that game I told you about, and then I, I lost the Kentucky game. Like we're, we're rooting everywhere. for Duquesne now that Akron's out. Yes. You know, Mister Mister Dan brought himself. Uh, so ESPN, I guess this. This women's basketball season, they just did their record numbers uh, for women's basketball. To me, this should signal to ESPN, hey, have the WNBA season during the NBA season. Like, Absolutely. Do it together. And honestly, treat it like an undercard event. Like, before the Celtics play the Lakers, we're going to have these two teams. Sorry, yeah. I don't know any of the team names. <laughs> the Sparks. Fun. One of the teams called yeah, the Sparks, I, know I the think. Sparks. I know the Sparks. I, didn't, I just didn't. Didn't want to embarrass myself there, <laughs> but I, I think I think that that should kind of like, we have the Lady Lakers, <laughs> yeah, playing the I don't know, I don't know, uh, it, whatever, Wh- whoever they're playing, however they may be playing. My point is, women's basketball is thriving on the college side mm-hmm. during men's basketball season. The NBA and WNBA should do the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean. It's kind of like the X, and I'm not saying they should do this in football because it's a different dichotomy, right? It's not genders, mm-hmm. but like the XFL and all those other leagues playing in the offseason, it just feels weird. Like, I, I think it's the best formula because there's so much football with college and pro going on in the fall. I think they have to do that. But like when it's like June 15th and you're like, there's football and like, yeah, we're drinking white claws at the pool. Like, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> No laws when you're drinking white claws. <laughs> no laws when you're drinking claws. <laughs> but they did. Uh, ESPN did sell out their entire catalog of, of ad slots. That's amazing. So shout out to them. For the shout out for women's basketball, man. Yeah. We are an equal rights 
platform here. I mean, and it's it's going to be a great one. Caitlin Clark, Ju, Juju, uh, Sheldon, but you know uh, what? The, Angel he, Reese. Here's like, what you got I, stars now. Here's what I love about women's college basketball, as opposed to the WNBA. The WNBA is funded by the NBA, right? Mm -hmm. They they created the league just because they just to because we care about women, and it's kind of like the women's soccer team and R Megan Rapinoe's bitch ass, <laughs> like like just complaining about how much the men make. Blah blah blah. blah. It's like, dude. Put together something that people want to fucking watch, and then they will, and you'll get paid more. And that's what women's college basketball has done, right? Mm -hmm. They actually have those stars you just mentioned, and now people want to watch. And now Caitlin Clark's a celebrity. She's making great NIL money because it's entertaining. Yeah. And that you are an entertainer when you play the sport. So stop whining, Megan Rapinoe. No one fucking cares. Be a Caitlin Clark. Just go ball the fuck out, ice in your fucking veins, and we're gonna tune in. If you I mean the at some point the product sells itself. If you are a yeah. hooper. Like it'll it'll come through and like competitive nature wise, like like Angel Reese became a star. She's a fucking hooper, a no, bucket. Absolutely, like. and it, it goes the same. You know what I watch a, a ton of because of my daughter, but I love it. Oklahoma softball, and you know why I watch it? Because it's not a bunch of pink haired fucking whiny bitches like like Megan Rapinoe. It's some fucking you, tough ass you girls. Fucking hate, Megan dude. Rapinoe. I hate Megan Rapinoe <laughs> maybe more than anyone. I, that I don't that I don't know. Nowhere on my today's big hoop board did I have Megan I just Rapinoe I just got a picture of her in my head and I'm <laughs> like, yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> like of all the women's soccer players, I don't know if I would have named her early. You know, like I, I shout out to like Mia Ham. Oh yeah, love, I love Mia Ham. Yeah, I who's, think, a, who's a girl that took her shirt off? I like her. <laughs> I mean, Hope Solo. Like we got yeah. we got some, but she sounds like she's being Star Wars. But neither here nor there. <laughs> um, Kentucky down goes Kentucky dog. <laughs> As soon as they lost, front office sports is hilarious. They posted John Calipari's buyout. They said $33 million. Hey. They really went down, bro. They got they have five NBA players on that roster, and Oakland got them. It's amazing. It's yeah. it was amazing. And I mean, when the when the kid shot what the, the Jack Gol Golkey? Yeah. He shot like seven threes in the first like five minutes. And I'm like, what? And then he started talking about his stats. Motherfucker just has a clip and he that's all he does. I mean, he's like Steph Curry without anything else. Yeah, he he is JJ Redick. He, like he's a one trick pony. If he catches that bitch, he's but not passing bro, it. It's going up. I'm talking contested, sideways. Like he's launching it right is, at the rim. Is it Jimmer? Yeah, it's just the Jimmer come back. Take the mask off, big dog. It's wild. It was wild to watch. And I mean, they you have the stat here. He had, he has taken 335 total field goals attempts. 335. 327 of them have been, have been threes. He's only taken eight two-point field goals in yeah. his entire career. Easiest scouting report ever. If he catches that bitch, it's going up. And they knew that. And they, he still was cooking them. He came off the bench and hit 10 threes. Wild times. That is how legends are born, bro. Yeah. Dude Wild just times. went fucking nuts, dog. Here we go. Oakland has spent $2.3 million on their men's basketball program in 2023. Kentucky has spent $23.6 million on men's basketball in 2023. Got that ass handed to him by a dude, a dude who looks like a fucking the villain in, in the Incredibles. Oh, Jack is what we need, man. Is What is it? I don't know how to say his last name, but it's like it's, it looks like Go Hike. Jack Go Hike. <laughs> Jack Go Hike. It's Golki. At least that's how I'm saying it. Uh, that's fine. Golki, we'll, we'll take it. So, yeah, I mean, is there is, is there anybody – maybe in sports, who does less with more than Coach Calipari? That's my question in the chat, and I already know Michigan fans are going to be like, Ryan Day, but is there anybody? I mean, the, the answer is no, and it was interesting hearing, like, former coaches try to justify it because, like, basically saying that Coach Calipari's goal is not to win the title. His goal is to get guys ready for the NBA, and they're more of an NBA factory, and because of NIL and roster continuity and guys staying in the same place, they won't be able to win games because those older schools that know how to play college basketball the right way will always beat them. But if you have five NBA stars on the court against a bunch of fucking, like, no star, unrecruited Oakland athletes, like, shouldn't you just win? Like, you should. You definitely, no matter how you slide, I don't care there's how you no slice excuse, it. right? You that, can't justify this loss. Now, if they can't make it to the Final Four and then losing to, like, Kansas or yeah, something. Kansas yeah, Kansas or, or you know, the old Villanova, Villanova team, Wisconsin, when they had Frank Kaminsky. Like, okay, I can get on board with that. Yeah. But to watch coaches defend Calipari for that is crazy. Well, Kentucky fans aren't hearing it. <laughs> no, they're not. Because my whole house, outside of me, because I was rooting for Oakland, were, they were livid. Like, he needs to be fired right now. Da -da -da. <laughs> like, him. People are mad at him.
get him, <laughs> get him the fuck up out of here. But yeah. that's how it goes. Do you know Anthony Davis was once going to go to Ohio State? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Anthony Davis was silently committed to Ohio State, and then switches. Shit changed. Coach Cal got to him, huh? Co- Coach Coach Cal got to him. It's really it's a really interesting story because they would have won the title that year, I think. Yeah. If that would have pulled that off, oh goodness. Oh goodness. Um, here's a rules update. Remember the NFL rules committee got together mm-hmm. um and they're discussing the tush push because you know, player safety, injury, this, that, and the third, players pushing other players. Mm-hmm. And they are there is actually no support for banning the tush push, which shocked me. I thought there would absolutely be support for banning it. I mean, no one's got hurt. No, I, I guess that's that's the big thing. Yeah, no one's got hurt. Damn, you're not surprised he, he, that all there has been no support no, for it. Okay, no. because here's the thing, Chris. I'll be I'll be interested to see if it's as good without Jason Kelsey. Yeah, because that whole thing. I mean, I, I Jalen Hurts is a strong dude, like for sure. But that whole thing works because when Jason Kelsey snaps the ball, he's so athletic. He can bend and get that low and still generate that much power. Like, that's why it was so good. Are they going to have another? Because other teams tried it and and had a little success, but it wasn't as dominant as Philly. The first team to fail at the tush push was the New York Giants. I knew it. I knew it. (laughs) It was a fourth and six inches. Daniel Jones caught it and took a knee. I could not believe it. Yeah. Like... Will it be as good without Jason Kelsey? Because they were the best in the league at this tush push because of him. And now he's retired. Are they going to have another center that can do it like him? Because other teams tried. It wasn't as successful. Yeah. And It'll also, still be run, though. And also, I, I will say this. Near the end of the year, the tush push was going for like two or three yards. It was cut back significantly because teams figured out, okay, if we cut and then shoot both safeties up, yeah. we can create that wall. Then it's just a strength match. And, and then they had all the little compliments, right? They had mm-hmm. the fake tush push and the little jet sweep. Like They they had it cooking, man. I love the package. I don't know how Madden's going to do it next year. Like I, I need a know. tush push package. With yeah, Philly. you got to. Because I was looking, bro, and you can, you can run the Philly special out of – you can run the Philly special out of, uh, out of the, the shotgun wishbone, the pistol wishbone. <laughs> But no tush push variants. So I, I, I found it interesting that there was no support. But also, when there is no support like this, it makes me think, okay, the defense is going to catch up at some point. Mm-hmm. There's always been ebbs and flows, right? Mm-hmm. Remember when the fucking Wildcat offense broke onto the scene? It was so good. And then teams adjusted. You know, the RPO scene came on and people thought, oh, we need to change the rule on how far linemen can be on the field. Then yeah. teams adjusted. Yep. Like every time the pendulum swings, it'll swing back the other way. And I do expect the tush push this next year not to be near as good as, as or effective as it was this last year. Yeah. So um, that is that. Zach, the like the, this group of odds for the first overall pick has uh, has come out. And I found this interesting quarterback wise. For the first overall pick, it's minus a thousand Caleb Williams. <laughs> How much money do you have to bet on that to make any money? Well, if you bet a thousand, you win a hundred. So you risk a thousand dollars, you're only gonna win a hundred. I say just do it. Just do it. take out the mortgage. Hey, my brother does this every year on the Heisman, like last year with Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. He's like, you just look at the odds, you're like, Well, Jaden Daniels is definitely winning it, and he'll put like a grand on it to win like 500 or 300. And he's like, It's it's a free 300. Yeah, and then you can take this 300 and throw it on a parlay. It's yeah. like you didn't lose anything. Right. That's like that. That's the betting side of it. Now it does get a little more interesting. That Commanders at the number two pick, Jaden Daniels at minus two thirteen, Drake May at plus one hundred five, Caleb Williams at plus fourteen hundred. <laughs> well, he's going to be. Man, gone I'm going to tell you what. Yeah. If you parlayed Jaden Daniels to go one and Caleb Williams to go two, and it hit, wow, plus one thousand and plus fourteen hundred. Combine those odds in a parlay. You're fucking up a stack. And then go Drake May at three. Yeah. Now oh. at, at this point last year. Bill Levis was the favorite over CJ Stroud to be the number two overall pick. Yeah, but we knew that was bullshit. I see. I didn't. Well, if Vegas had as the favorite, well, like it makes you really wonder. Like we, I, I knew, me and you knew absolutely that that CJ would be better than Bill. Yeah. I don't know what these fucking teams are. going to do. That's the issue, right? You you don't know what the NFL is going to do, right? Like I knew CJ was way better than Bill Levis, mm-hmm. but. I also have seen a lot of players get drafted before other players that I know for a fact they're not better than that. Like, just look at the receivers. I mean, shit, no, don't talk about receivers. You knew that Zach Wilson was not better than Justin Fields. You knew that Mitch Trubisky was not better than Deshaun Watson or Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely. And yet we see NFL teams, the love button, and go. Every year. Mm -hmm. So it's going to happen this year. Going to be interesting. What I think is crazy about this is, 
they went all I've, I've always seen odds for the number one overall pick but they gave odds for like the top 10 dog i will always do the and and the jj mccarthy like when he enters the list is interesting like marv is minus 200 to the cardinals at mm -hmm. four jj has second best odds there then malik neighbors is odds on favorite for the chargers at the fifth pick jj second the Giants' sixth pick, Malik Neighbors, is, has the best odds. Yeah. JJ second. But then he falls off the list because a team needs. The Titans, nowhere to be found. Falcons, nowhere to be found. So there's a chance, if I can just get through it's that Chargers and Giants pick, there's it, a chance. And that's where Vegas is so confused. This is the first time since I've been tracking it that I've seen the same odds for the same two players in back-to-back -back picks. Yeah, I mean, like one of them... <laughs> One, one of them's, of them's wrong. Gotta go right. <laughs> one of them's wrong for sure. He can't go both places. No, you cannot be drafted twice. <laughs> no. So I, I would I would believe Malik Neighbors goes at five to the Chargers, and then it's all on your Giants. Are they going to take JJ, or do they want a receiver in Roma Dunze or one of those guys? And I normally would agree with you about the Chargers, but who was their head coach? I know, I know. It's and fucking Harbaugh. I'm saying, and, and Harbaugh is going to go Joe Alt there. Like, if you can go get a lineman or defensive player. Or does he draft his quarterback? Yeah, he – I don't – He could save you you your your sanity with your Giants yeah. fandom. I The thing is, I don't think – I don't think the Chargers brash would, would sign off on him drafting his quarterback. Well, you also don't know the deal he made with the Chargers when he – I mean, he walked in – he could walk in and said, I, I want final say in all draft picks. Like, yeah, but – they, they gave him Herbert 200 M's, big dog. So I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know if that no, gives a fuck. But let me get a quick word from our partner, Zach. So I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back after this. What's up, Menace Army? Got to tell you about it. I've told you about it a hundred times. It's all about miracle made sheets. Did you know your the, the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night. It's self cooling for better quality sleep, self cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. Comfort and quality. They're the best, I always say, the best sheets I've ever owned. Designed for your skin. Try miracle.com slash menace. Try miracle.com slash menace and you get 20% off. You, it's already, if you say, if you order today, you already can save over 40%. If you use our promo code menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. The best sheets you've ever owned for way cheaper than they should be. Go check them out. That is what they say. No cap. No cap detected. Here we go. Last thing on this list of draft. Zach, this is going to be one of those drafts where we might not see a defensive player get taken for a little minute. Right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of offensive players on the on the top of this list. I'm saying Caleb, Jaden, Drake, all offense. Marvin, offense. Neighbors, Harrison, all offense. Joe Alt, offense. Roma Dunes, offense. Dallas Turner to the Falcons at eight. I think they're going to go offense, though. Because they always go offense. <laughs> yeah, I, it's going to be interesting. But then you know how it goes. The, the draft is so funny to be like to watch play out because every time it's like the minute Marv gets picked, these teams are like, fuck, the receiver's going to come off the board and they just pick receivers. They panic. Yeah. And then they're like, ah, oh, do I want to receive? And that first team will switch from offense to defense. And then all the other teams are going to be like, ah, shit, we got to go defense. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so like momentum shifting. What I think could happen is everyone's going to be so offensive obsessed that that you're going to see like a Dallas Turner or someone trade up to go get so like a one of those fringe playoff teams that has some capital that's okay with packaging a second or even a third to get back up to that to that top yeah. ten and then you go get a defensive player and then you'll start to see him come off the board. I mean, last year with the Eagles, yeah. they went defense because they were like, we're good on offense. Yeah, we don't need anything. <laughs> like we're good. We know Jameer Gibbs is there, but Jalen Carter also there. Like yeah. let's let's get it going. So um, that's. It's going to be interesting, man. I'm really excited to see how the draft plays out, and I'm glad that each year, Zach, you've been more and more into the draft, and that makes me happy. It's yeah. a good thing. I mean, I, I love – It's entertaining. I like the draft, and I, I didn't – I liked the draft when I was coaching because I got to see guys that I coached or at least that played for us at Ohio State that I didn't directly coach. I got to see them realize their dreams. That's why I used to watch it. Now I'm watching it because I study the shit out of the landscape of college football. Right. And so – I hate it because they're fucking idiots in my mind from my perspective, but it's still cool to see like where are these guys that I've been watching for three years and studying their tape, like where are they going to go and, and, and will it translate? It, it's just a different 
dynamic for me. It's interesting to see like you talk about what traits matter to you versus like these all these NFL scouts mm-hmm. and kind of like what what the bust rate uh, is for a lot of those guys. But Zach, I do want to get some super chats and some uh, some menace member announcements. Austin, welcome to the gang. Thank you for becoming a menace member. Absolutely. If you don't know, the army is accepting official memberships. If you go to YouTube, you go if if you want. Here's here's how you do it on your phone. I found out too. Oh. If you go to your browser, not not the YouTube app, the browser, and you go to our page, Menace to Sports, or YouTube.com forward slash Menace to Sports, or whatever, yeah, that's what it is. And then you just have to click the little three buttons and, and, and view it in, like, web mode, not mobile mode. And then the join button is right there. But if you join, you get Avi's. Your Avi will evolve the longer you're a member. You get a, We're going to have a custom keyboard. We're, we're going to do a lot of fun shit with it. We're going to do a members-only chat at the end of a couple shows. It's going to be fun. So if you want to support the brand, go join the Army officially on YouTube. Yep, just a, a, way, a way to support, and we are thankful for everyone that's a part of the Army. Alex, thanks for the five. Love the show. Just became a general. How do I get in the Slack chat? We'll send you the link right after the show. Massive. Chris, thank you for the five. Feeling like it's getting, feel like getting some nachos tonight. Zach, you are a self-proclaimed nacho snob. What are your top three places for nachos in Central Ohio? Mm, I don't know that. Yogi's are the best nachos I've ever had. They're I might, I might hit Yogi's after the show to go um, nachos. I would say Kitchen Social has outstanding nachos, and they have brunch. They have breakfast nachos, which are fucking incredible. Um, I don't know a third. Those are two my two go tos. Um. I'm going to just leave it at that. I don't know if anyone else deserves to be in that conversation at the moment. <laughs> I thought you were about to start gatekeeping. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, you got to really impress me. Mm-hmm. No, I, I hear you. I hear you on that. Future Black, thanks for the five. Yins out here claiming the black and gold mean you got to bring the live show out here in Pittsburgh. Pretty sure there's an OSU bar around. I would love to go to, back to the homeland of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Man, shut your ass up. <laughs> We'll, we'll look into it. We're, we're, we're trying to plan a lot of a lot of live shit. I mean, it's <laughs> especially seeing the turnout we've had at Yogi's. Shout out April 12th. We uh we will be there. Hard road yep. Yogi's live show. Pull day, up. day before the spring game. Just come in a little early, come hang out. But just that atmosphere, the energy, like hanging out with the army in person, having a couple of drinks is is second to none. Nothing beats it. Nothing. Nothing beats it. <laughs> 18 Roland, thank you for becoming a member. Good to see you in here. Elks, member Elks, thank you for the two. Shout out, Dayton Flyers. We are UD. Flyered up. Flyered up. 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 Blake, thank you for becoming a member. And here we go. More Flyers love Blake. Member Blake, thanks for the five. That was awesome. Baby, 937. Shout out, seeing them too. Real Dayton love out there. That was awesome. Um, Speed, thanks for the five. Guys have been all over the Menace to Sports website and can't find where to submit my resume for cameraman of the upcoming Menace to Sports OnlyFans page. <laughs> Can I provide my own poncho? <laughs> <laughs> well, all those details will come out later. We're just yeah. in the initial phases. <laughs> right, the initial, the initial phases. We need real artists. We're going to get the artists first. Member Gorky, thanks for the five. Finally won some plays in NCAA basketball after a week. Play dogs, but today I took fave. St. Mary, Auburn, Bama, San Diego State money line. Tomorrow, Zona and money line, Oregon plus five and a half. Oregon plus five and a half. Gorky's bets. Here we go. Gorky's bets. Ben, thanks for the five. Zach, I still find it crazy that my patch drafted three Gators in 2010. Cunningham, Spikes, and Hernandez. Yeah. Wild. I mean, it, Bill Belichick came down and was like, wow, these guys have been, I mean, trained ridiculously they're great players like he, he just really bought into urban's program and he mm-hmm. t- just started just taking his kids i mean you see that with when, when teams fall in love with certain programs yeah. like i mean shit we saw that with the new orleans buckeyes now i know that it's kind of faded a little bit but they still got pete warner um chase young and chris olave all there mm-hmm. but i mean you shit you saw it i mean the chargers fell in love with tcu players that was an odd thing to do <laughs> very odd um the eagles the leading up to the Super Bowl run, they fell in love with Georgia players. Oh, yeah. Like, they wouldn't got everybody from Georgia they could. And it's what you do, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Belichick loved the fact that if he took a kid from Florida, he did it with Bama, too. If you take a kid from Bama or Florida, he knew Urban. He knew Nick Saban way better than he knew Urban, but knew him really well. He knew, I can coach the shit out of this guy because he's been getting motherfucked for three, four years. Yeah, and I can trust the eval. I've heard a lot of NFL yeah. personnel. Like, you, you draft a Clemson guy, and you're like, 
what's Dabo been doing? Giving him hand jobs? Like, has he been coaching him hard? Like, ah. Well, and like I've heard a lot of guys talk about sometimes when they have relationships with newer coaches to the scout, every single player they bring up is a baller, a great oh, yeah. player, a steal. Yeah. And they struggle with that. They want to know the real ins and outs of a player. And with some schools, you don't get that. Now, names weren't mentioned, but I can imagine Clemson. Like, Will Shipley's going to be Christian McCaffrey. Right. It's like, well, he's telling me that. How can I trust anything, him to say anything bad about any of these players? There's no doubt. So, honest evals, I think, are kind of what lead to that kind of thing. And if, you know, Bill Belichick knows Nick and knows Urban, like, they're not going to sugarcoat anything. Because mm -hmm. that doesn't help them, because then it's a bust. No doubt. Dusty, thanks. Dusty <laughs> owner, thanks for the five. What's up, boys? What up, Philly? On the real, how much would it take for y'all to step in the ring with Iron Mike? Have a great weekend. Not doing it. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. Um, I was stepping in the ring with Iron Mike. Uh, if we did like, if we did five rounds, a hundred bands around. Yeah, that's about not all. doing it. I would do it for. I mean, right? I mean, he's 57. Like you're at, you're athletic. I'm athletic. Like just get on your bike. <laughs> just, you feel me? I'm gonna have to do a lot of cardio so I can run away from that motherfucker because I don't want that right. I don't want that right hitting me. I just yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. You definitely don't want the right hitting you. Honestly, I'd worry more about the body shot, bro. I feel like you could destroy your yeah i don't care where it hits me i just don't want it to hit me yeah that's I'm, a, I'm gonna be like i better be like mayweather just fucking defensive best defensive boxer in the world like now nah, you ain't hitting me yeah i'm just i'm just getting on my bike like you'd have to chase me 57 old ass nigga bro. Yeah, you're right. not catching me <laughs> nick thank you for gifting a membership that's real community that's real appreciate love. it nick jeremy thank you for becoming a member member jeremy old ben thanks for the five when will jose ramirez get help in cleveland no, fucking never i i love the the indians is what we call them on this show i love them i mean I, I, that's my only baseball team you know in the nfl i got a couple teams i like i don't watch basketball and baseball is my only team i fuck everyone else i don't care i don't even I, I don't like the reds i don't like the dodgers the yankees none of them just the indians and they're a lot like the browns except that they get so close to success and then they just fucking sell everybody yeah, like it, I mean, they won't pay anybody i mean it's the dolans yeah and right. the only reason they have jose ramirez is because he said i want to stay in cleveland i'll take a discount right it's like we the dolans are fucking awful i mean they're just so cheap and they're like admittedly cheap like yeah and they don't care they're making a ton of money right. and they have one of the best farm systems and developments in the in the entire major league baseball mm -hmm. like they get these young kids and then all of a sudden, you're like, holy shit, this dude's going to be a monster. He becomes a monster, and bye, Francisco Lindor. Yeah, there's a dog in the, the office. fucking dog in here barking. <laughs> it's the Browns. Like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> um, Coach Zach, thank you for becoming a member. The Super Chat Friday's booming. Keel, thanks for the two. Chris, I bet Justine would smoke you in basketball. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not <laughs> If her shot's on. If her shot's not on, she ain't smoking nobody. I mean, I, I don't even hoop anymore. Jeremy, thanks for the two. Member Jeremy, you can join on mobile. Close the chat. Click join. Oh, that's really easy. You can join. What did he say? He join. said you could join on mobile. Like you just got to close the chat and then like behind the chat, there must be a button. That says, oh, there you go. I didn't know that. Look See, that. look at the army helping us out. The Jeremy putting guys on game. Papa, thanks for the five. Chris, would you rather do the first 90% of a blow job or the last 10%? Jesus Christ. Um, it what a fucking question. question. It's baseball season. Load up MLB the show. I'm not. That's the worst question I've ever. That's heard. the worst question I've ever <laughs> yes. heard. Yes. Would you like to do the first 90% of a blowjob or the last 10%? That's the worst. That's a wild question. That's the worst shit I've ever heard, bro. That's the worst shit I've ever heard. Bro. I need to know in the chat. You going first 90 or last 10? That's whoever came up with that question is diabolical and needs oh locked up God. right now. Put that person in jail. <laughs> Because what the fuck was that? All right, I'm going to hit the Super Chats in a little bit, but I, I do want to talk about this because PFF put out a list, and they do not have Denzel Burke on their top 10 corners, returning corners this year. They got Will Johnson, number one, Benjamin Morrison, two, Castro, three, Davis, four, Travis Hunter, five, Jabbar Muhammad, six. Oh, no, Denzel Burke, seven. I was I like, he's right I'm there. Sure. Yeah, Denzel Burke is seven. Yeah, I think it's – I mean – you know what it is, right? It's all based on grades that they have from these sheets. I do think Will Johnson's the best corner in the country. I've said that for over almost a year. Mm -hmm. um, I think Denzel Burke is in that conversation too. Benjamin Morrison's outstanding. I would say, I don't, I don't remember Sebastian Castro. I didn't watch a ton of Iowa. Certainly didn't watch any Arizona. So Takario Davis, no idea. Travis Hunter. I mean, it's it's tough. I, I think you know you're a top ten corner now. You got a year to go prove you're you're one of the top two. Yeah, I probably would have had. Um... 
Denzel top five. Yeah, I think I, Denzel's I, probably better than Jabbar Muhammad. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I like the kid. The kid's a kid from Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, I like that kid too. I think Denzel, I mean, Denzel was really, really good. I don't think he was locking shit down like, like an island. Like, like he's going to go be Pat Sertain in the NFL yet. I think he was just, he just showed like, damn, this dude is going to be a first rounder. Yeah, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I I probably would have had him ahead of Sebastian Castro, mainly because he was the number one corner on his team, mm -hmm. like by, by a wide margin. Also, it's crazy that like without black corners, Iowa just continues to crank them out. <laughs> like, you know, Sebastian Without Castro's, black people in general. Yeah, just like. Without black players, basically. No black players, and they still have like a top five DB every year. <laughs> right. Like, Sebastian Castro is not black. I don't I don't know if I can call him. I think he's. Um, I, I, I don't know anything about him. I mean, whenever I see the last name Castro, I think Cuban. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's for obvious reasons. Yeah, but he, I mean, he's not, he's not black. I, Dude, this fucking dog is amazing. <laughs> There's a fucking dog in here. I am going to snap on these fucking people. <laughs> Get the fucking dog outside. It's a fucking office. Oh, buddy. Yeah, I don't know what he is, but he's Hispanic of some sort, I think. Yeah, good, good little player. I guess, I, I don't know. I don't know. And honestly, I think Travis Hunter's good, Zach. I think he's really good. But I don't think he played like a top five corner for the entirety of last year. Yeah, but see, here's the thing, Chris. You talk about a top five corner, like, if we're talking NFL draft, we're talking about skill set. Like Travis Hunter is probably the best corner in the country, but okay, they that's... choose to play him both ways, which lessens his impact and performance at corner. Mm -hmm. But like, if you just got to take a corner and say, all right, you want, you get one corner and you can just play him at corner. Who are you taking? I'm taking Travis Hunter. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. How do you draft eval him? Cause like, you're not going to have a ton of good tape. Because obviously, like his legs are going to be blown out the back half of the year. Colorado needs him to play every single fucking snap. Yeah. Like next year, like in in the cornerback draft class, you're going to have Will Johnson, Travis Hunter, Denzel Burke, Jabbar Muhammad. Excuse me. Like how do you even like how do you excuse Travis Hunter's bad tape? I think just what we just talked about. Just like, okay, like the like dude's is, playing 150 is, snaps a game. Is that so? Is that enough for you? I guess is what I'm saying. Like is I mean you trust the trade. You know how it is, bro. Yeah, he's gonna go to the combine, do what he does. He's gonna they're run gonna a get, sub four three, and, and they're gonna they're gonna go to uh, private workouts, and he's gonna look like Dion, and it's gonna be like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I, I know why. Yeah, he was his legs are blown out. He's playing 150 plays a game, and I just watched this motherfucker in a private workout, and he is freaky freak. I think he's not going to be a top 15 pick. And because of that, he's going to end up being a massive steal for whatever NFL team. I think he will get overanalyzed and picked apart. Because mm -hmm. I think when you become a celebrity too early in college football, you open yourself up to way too much criticism. And we see guys get psychoanalyzed all the time and causing draft slides. CJ Stroud, one of them. Marvin Harrison Jr. right now, kind of one of them. Mm -hmm. I, mean, God, I mean, people, quote unquote, overthink it, yeah. um, if that makes sense. Also, look at number 10 on that list. Kobe Bryant. We always got, a, you know, one thing's for certain. <laughs> All these motherfuckers name their kid Kobe with the last name Bryant. And but they're they never, not Hoopers. <laughs> and they never spell it like Kobe. No. <laughs> well, the rule of thumb is if you name your son Kobe Bryant, lockdown corner. How the, and how the fuck are you going to name your kid LeBron and spell it different? Like with an A, L, A, B? Like just, or, or add an N. You could add an N. Le yeah. Like yeah. Kobe's different. You could spell that a bunch of ways. Right. I mean, there was there was a Kobe Bryant that played soccer. It was a girl at St. V, right around when Paris Campbell was there. Mm-hmm. Which was which was this nuts. dude's name is C O B E E. Like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> How was and and then the other Kobe that you knew was uh, C, C O B Y. C O B Y, yeah. Okay, Kobe, I mean, Kobe, I, and Kobe. Yeah, I think right? so. I think that's how he spells it. I hope that's how he spells Christian it. Christian Bryant's little brother, yeah, great Buckeye player. His little brother was the Thorpe Award winner from Cincinnati. Yep, and went to Glenville and didn't get the green light to come into Ohio State. Mm -mm -mm. What a wild time um i can't believe that 90 10 question that's just gonna fuck me up yeah I, that, that rattled me yeah if it rattles you brother i'm having like an internal battle because i i don't want to answer it but it's like what is the better option we'll never know <laughs> drew thank you for becoming a member you're a legend uh keel thanks for the two chris medical bills might cost a quarter million dollars after the tyson fight no you guys don't understand i'm on my bike like he might punch me a couple times that shit might hurt but He's 57 years old. Yeah. Like, yeah, he can hit hard as fuck, but guess what? I'm a track lead. Like, <laughs> I'm going to gas him out. Like, I, like not running, even running laps. I won't even put my hands up. I'm just going to let the gloves dangle, and I'm just dancing around the ring. Yeah. We're not doing it. Everyone's going to want their money back, but I'm not getting hit. No. 
Um, Raph, thank you for the 10. If you are sure your team is going to beat the second half spread over two and a half years, how would how would bet? Hmm. I don't know squat about sports betting. Second half spread over two and a half years. How would you bet? That's um, a live bet, right? Yeah, you could do a live bet. You could pre usually before the game starts, you can bet on, on half bets, but also live at halftime, you can bet on the second half. <laughs> Just go, whatever app you use, we use my bookie. Just go in there at halftime, and it'll have the game right there, and you can bet bet all those bets live because the game's going on. Mm. Chris, thanks for the five. Love the show. Did Chris model the hairline for the new Menace logo? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the Menace, the Demon, yeah. or the M? <laughs> I mean, they're both the same, right? I, I don't know. The Demon's way worse. It's like a fucking mohawk. <laughs> it's like the Vegeta hairline, you know? <laughs> Um, Nick, thank you for gifting a membership. You are a legend. Zach, do you want to get a quick word from our second partner? Sounds good. Episode? We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. The Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past. And now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't, I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world is prize picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three-pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and, and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together, you can win up to 25 times your money. Massive payouts at prize picks. And my favorite part about prize picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant, and in the first half, he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half. Your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to 25 times your money. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Prize Picks now. Check it out. There you go. Caden Proctor, obviously, um, is entering the portal or enter the portal again. <laughs> and the reports are coming out via on three that Caden Proctor has not received funds from the collective. He received a portion of his Swarm Inc. contract payment from a sponsoring business, but I guess never got his money that it agreed upon to go. To go to Iowa? Yeah, to go to Iowa. Huh, I gotcha. It's not received funds from the collective. He received a portion of his swarming contracted payment from a sponsoring business. Yeah. Interesting. So he hit the portal again. And it's funny because when he talked about going to Iowa, he said it was all about the relationships. Right. It was all about, you know, those and he also, not being burned. He also snitched on them. Yeah. He said, well, they reached out mid-season to see how I was doing. And it's like, uh-oh, that's <laughs> that's definitely tampering. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I don't know what happened here, but... Well, fucking wild. That's why. Like, this is college football now. Right. A, a true freshman started at left tackle for Bama. That is a nice, newly paved highway with no other cars on it, straight to the first round. And he said, man, I'm going to take this exit and go on this bumpy ass road. Like, why would he ever leave Bama? I don't know. Now he goes to Iowa and two months later is going back to Bama. Like, now I got red flags. Before he did all this, I said lock top five pick. I mean, I studied his Bama film. Yeah. I said, this kid's a freshman. Oh, he's locked top 10 pick. Now I'm like, oh, I don't know. He, he's got some, a lot of red flags. It is wild. And I, and I wonder how Iowa will handle this because he, he got the money from the Iowa business and obviously didn't receive the money from his quote unquote contract. He's now leaving Iowa. Mm -hmm. It's like, are, is there going to be guardrails in place? You think in that contract to keep somebody there? Like you would think like, you got to play for Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> like to get paid, you got to play for Iowa. So now whatever small local business just came out a fat ass check. <laughs> Some poor fucking local Sam Mom sports bar. <laughs> Sam sports bar just got railroaded by Caden Proctor. They gave him like a hundred grand to be like the face of Sam sports bar. And he said two months later, deuces, I got my money in a bank. I'm yeah. out of here. He said sayonara. That shit's crazy. And I crazy. wonder if we'll, if we'll hear more about this soon. Zach, if I told you five years ago, this is what we're going to get. God. Oh, this is just tip of the iceberg. What do you mean? This is just getting started. Every, like every cycle, right? Whether it's the season, the the winter, the spring, every quarter, right? It gets a little worse, mm -hmm. a little crazier, a little bit wilder. Something like something will come out. You're like, damn, I, 
I, I guess yeah. that's that's the first time that's happened. It's like the kids swim a little bit deeper out yeah, of the like, ocean. Think, think about what what we've watched this cycle, right? Nick Saban retires. Mm-hmm. Caleb Downs, all these fucking Caden, uh, Caden Proctor, all these guys transfer out, right? They're going to be at different programs. Quinshawn Judkins, not happy yeah. at Ole Miss. He's going to Ohio State. Wild. We also saw head coaches take coordinator jobs. Chip Kelly, right? Yeah, I Jeff mean, Halfley. Jeff, Jeff Halfley. There's talks right now that Stan Drayton might become the running back coach. He's mm-hmm. the current head coach. Going to take just a position coaching job? This is unprecedented. What's going on right now? Uncharted waters. We've never been here. And it's only going to get crazier until they fucking do something. Yeah, I mean, talks about guys holding out on game days. Yes. Until they get more money. But it is, And I said this a year ago when it first came in. I said, it's going to get to the point where if you're a great player, a great young player, you're going to go into the portal even if you're happy as shit and making good money. Because just entering the portal, because you can always come back from the mm-hmm. portal, but you enter the portal and now it's a free market. You can find out how much money you can make everywhere and you can decide where you want to play your second year. It's truly going to be like the NFL with no contracts. And also think about that, Chris, the NFL with no multi-year contracts. Yeah, so there was a weird window when the NBA was like that. It, it was LeBron would sign these two year deals with a first year opt out to see how much money he could get on the open market and just keep stacking it and taking advantage of the salary cap going up every year. So you weren't bound to a deal that was tied to the salary cap. Yeah. Um, now, Zach, I've heard <laughs> from a couple different people about how smaller schools are recruiting some kids and tampering with some kids. Oh, sure. And they're recruiting like, hey, come here for two years. You'll get a good amount of NIL from local businesses and then go play at a big school. Yeah. Like, we just want to be the minor league for you here. That's it. And that's what we're creating right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's that way or it's just they, you know, they find a dime in the rough. They develop someone that truly like the Mac. That is the minor league. If you are a great player in the Mac, you ain't ending in the Mac. No. You're no one. No NFL draft picks are going to graduate from Toledo anymore. And now I know schools are also looking at like four stars that are buried on depth charts that are young kids and be like, hey, come after spring, like go through your spring ball, come here, Mm -hmm. you'll start right away, and then you can go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I do expect to see some of that, almost like I thought we were going to see with uh, Travis Hunter. I thought Travis Hunter was going to go to Jackson State for a year and then go to Florida State afterwards, like after he played a little bit. Yeah, so did I. So, I mean, we're we're really (laughs) entering unique territory. Um, Speaking of unique territory, Bama, you know, after Nick Saban retired, there was a, a Lots of talk of a Bama fall off. Their recruiting slipped for a quick second there. Their talent composite slipped for a quick second there. As you would expect. Yeah, as it should. Dog, they've been on a run lately. And obviously, I talk about it more on the corner of the recruiting show. But I thought it was noteworthy that now they are back in the top five in the country for recruiting classes. Really? I mean. Really impressive from DeBoer, who people we, said can't, won't be able to recruit. Yeah, well, well, no. I mean, if they said that, they're just being dramatic. Yeah, we'll talk about like, they, the Georges of the world. The way you should have said it is how I said it. We don't know if he can recruit in the South Mm because he never has. But as I said, the caveat, every time we talked about it, he's also been outstanding everywhere he's been. One of those, I'll figure it out type of guys. Yeah. He brought his staff. They didn't miss a beat. And they're cooking again. And that's why I think he was the best hire. And I think Dan Lanning would have done a great job too. But both those candidates, I think we're going to hit the ground running. But it's crazy. I I know I didn't know it until you put this in because I don't follow recruiting. The number one class in the country right now, family. Yeah. Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers. Now, if I would have held a gun to your head and told you to guess who it was, you probably would have got it. Remember last week I put the segment in about they have got the number one in like five different positions? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, I mean, just. It Brian, is impressive Brian for Brian Kelly. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Right now you got LSU one, Ohio State two, Georgia three, Clemson hanging in there, even yeah. though they suck on, on Saturdays at four, Bama five, Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame at six, Dan Lanning and Oregon at seven. Like, just really good shit. No. Shocking to me that Florida Florida is at 13. I'm sure that's good. They're going to fall off when they, like, win one game this year. No, nah, dude, they'll come up, bro. They always choose violence late in the cycle, and they'll, they'll add a bunch of kids, though. Like, their volume will kind of help them propel. Yeah. Um, it is also telling when you look at the top five, SEC versus Big Ten. It's like, damn, we're still we're still a ways away. And you know Clemson's not going to the Big Ten if the whole lawsuit pans out. Yeah. So you can count them. As it's it's always the same shit. Texas is going to end up <clears throat> flip flopping with uh, with Clemson. Texas is going to end up with the top five class, and Clemson's going to be right there at nine, which is 
fine. That's yeah. still an SEC school. Right. I mean, that's what and, I'm saying. And, and so it's, when you talk have... about the Midwest brand, I've said this forever. It's it's not about Ohio State. Not really even about Michigan because they've never recruited that way, but they develop and they coach and they are always good. It's about the other teams. Notre Dame at six. Shout out to the Midwest brand. Marcus Freeman's doing a great job. Yeah. Penn State at 14. What the fuck are we doing? They like, got to be better. Pick it up. And then? Nobody. Wisconsin at 23? Like, got to do better. Mm-hmm. Got to do better. Because the SEC has number one, number three, number five, number nine, number ten. They got five in the top ten. Oh, we got Oregon. I forgot Oregon's in the big yeah, ten. Yeah, SEC is going to finish with four of the top five, likely. Yeah, and that's uh, that's really concerning. But shout out to Bama for for not falling off. Yeah, like that's they're, great. They're here and they're and they're here to stay. And I always wondered, like, is the Bama brand big because of Saban, or is the Bama brand big because of Bama? <laughs> well, it's, I mean. Nowadays, it's because of Saban and his program and what he did, right? Mm-hmm. The NFL players, all the national championships. Like, think about it, Chris. These kids that are that are getting recruited right now, they're 17 years old. So what does that mean? They were born in, what, 2007? God. <coughs> Is that that's right, math, right? 2007. Guess who was the coach at Bama? Nick Saban. Yeah. So, like, I think, yeah, 07. I think it was his first year. 06 or 07. They only know Nick Saban and Bama. Right. They only know LeBron Dominic. Right. Everywhere else, they've seen at least two coaches. Like, mm-hmm. all they know is Nick Saban's Bama. Yeah, Nick Saban's Bama. Dabo's Clemson. Yeah. He's been there a little while. But, like, LSU, gone through a bunch of coaches. Yeah. Ohio State, obviously, Urban. Yeah. Urban Ryan and, and Trestle, right? Yeah, Urban Ryan, Trestle, if you go since 07. Um, Kirby and Mark Richt. Uh, Kelly and... A bunch of them at LSU. Yeah. Well, the whole oh, world. You, oh, you do yeah. talk about Oregon. Ryan Kelly and, and, uh, and yeah, Freeman. Yeah, Willie Taggart and fucking yeah. Mario. and I mean, it, all these schools have had multiple coaches. Alabama, and you're right, Clemson are the two where kids that are getting recruited, all they know is Dabo's Clemson. Yeah. All they know is Saban's Bama. They don't know. I mean, oh, Bear Bryant. They don't know who the fuck that is. I was talking. I think I already told a story. I'm going to tell it again. I was talking to a guy at Cam, one of Cam's sessions. His son's a receiver. And he was like, yeah, I was telling him, like, they said at Westerville North, I think, is, is where my guy uh, Stanley Jackson is. They said, yeah, Joey Galloway is going to come out and help the receivers. <laughs> and he told his son that, and his son was like, huh? Who? Uh, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Dude played for like 17 years in the league. He's on TV every weekend. Like, these kids don't know anything other than what they've seen. Yeah, they don't know what they don't know. And honestly, like, like in, in a highlight era, too, like, yeah. you don't really see it. Like, the, the first thing they'll say is like – is. Is he on TikTok? Like, <laughs> and they'll search TikTok for him. And you're like, I doubt Joey Galloway has a TikTok. No, well, you can never see that Joe Galloway highlights on TikTok. Honestly, if you search Joe Galloway's name on TikTok, you'll probably see one of our videos at the top there. Probably. Because we had a video do a million views on TikTok about Joey Galloway. Yes, we did. As she we're educating the youth. We're we're doing the job. Yes. Doing the <laughs> damn thing. Zach, some more super chats because it is super chat Friday. Um, Nick, thank you for gifting that membership. You're a legend, amputee gamer member. Thank you for the 10 go flyers. Hell yeah, we're here for it. Love it. Bucks by Fitty, thank you for the five. Hypothetically, if Devin is ahead of Will at the end of spring, any chance he transfers since he only has one year left and doesn't want to be second <laughs> string? I mean, there's always a chance. Always a chance. What a wild, what a wild world that would be. Kid transfers in to take the starting job doesn't win the starting job and just transfers out after spring and goes somewhere else. That would be wild. Yeah. I mean, I, I wonder because right now, everything that I've heard would suggest that Devin's having the better spring so far. And a lot of that's attributed to, Oh, he's been here longer. He's yeah, chemistry with the receiver. Absolutely valid. And also we've what to yesterday was the second practice with fucking any kind of pad on. Right. And you got to get through the scrimmages. Kids can look good early. He's been here a while. He knows at least new last year's offense, which I mean, it didn't wholesale change when Chip Kelly came in. So like he should, he should have been ahead, but these scrimmages are where you really fuck around and find out. I, and I wonder if you are will, or if you're Devin, at what point do you hit the pan? Well, honestly, I don't think Devin has hit the panic button. Cause he has more years of eligibility left. He took the red shirt. I'm like, like a smart young man. But if you're, if you're will Howard, and Devin goes out there and balls in this <sighs> scrimmage, at what point are you looking around like? Well, it's kind of like Joe Burrow, right? Nobody asked Joe Burrow to leave. Right. He went through spring, saw Dwayne lighten it up. He wasn't quite there where Dwayne was, and he said, I, I'm not going to start. And so he elected to leave. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot like what could happen here. If either of them is just 
night and day better than the other one. The other one's gonna be like, damn, like be realistic, right? They'll be they they watch it, they watch the film, they see the practice, they'll sit there and say, I'm not, I'm not gonna start. And the, and they should. And then it, it, like if you're if you're Ryan Day, do you tell well, Howard, no, you are gonna start. We need you to stay here. Like how like how do you even manage that? I think he already fucked that up once. He won't fuck that up a second time. If, and, and to either of them, I think he's just gonna tell him what he thinks, the truth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. And the, dude, the, if Will Howard hits the portal at the end of spring. We would do record numbers the next oh, day. Record numbers. That will be fucking chaotic. I, I don't have a, a horse in the race, as they say. Mm-hmm. I don't care if Will's the starting quarterback or Devin. I mean, it'd be cool if it was Devin and he was a baller because then I wouldn't look like I didn't know what I was talking about, even though it wasn't me saying something. I think I want my get back because people called me all kinds of names. Yeah, I, I, I'm i down with that. Yeah. Not that I have anything against Will. Like, I don't, like, That's what I mean. Like, if Will yeah. Howard's a starter, I'm not rooting against him. Right, like, like if he's better than Devin, fucking let's ride. Yeah, and like Will Howard's dad's not calling people trying to fight us. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know Will Howard's dad. He might not even have a dad, but I fucking yeah. love that guy because I've never even heard of him. We're here. We're all here for Howard. <laughs> Gorky, member Gorky, thanks for the two. We are degenerates forever on this platform. Let's fucking go. Let's go. That's true. We are degenerates. 18 roll. Thanks for the 10. Chris, I'm sorry, but the image of Daniel Jones trotting his mothering hips up there to put on a Giants cap on draft day while Fields looks sick slick. is slick. Sick. Oh, sick. You're yeah, right. sick is still too fresh on my mind. They're drafting JJ gang. They weren't in the same draft. Yeah, Jones and Justin Fields. Yeah. I think he's just saying the image oh. that they took Daniel Jones and he's just a dorky square yeah and then watching justin fields thread it out walk up on stage like he, he oh gotcha, they're, gotcha. they're gonna take jj i thought you meant like sick to his stomach like oh i like, got you I, I i i fucked that up uh it's ref fucking, thanks his fucking dog is barking at <laughs> ref thanks for the two love the show you fellas make my day every day every day you make my day ref you know i never said that about a ref before uh jord thanks for the five zach can you explain in depth what losing your stripe means it, it means you're like you're a grown-ass man right you are officially a buckeye so like how you do it you have to you have to be living right right you have to be showing up early you have you have to be who the coaches are trying to push you and demanding you to be which is be a pro you show up early you, you do prehab in the training room you're you're watching extra film you're locked in in meetings you, you go to class you you got to be doing what exactly what they want you to do and then you got to ball the fuck out. Yeah. Like you got to go and practice and you got to make plays. And if you do, they'll be like, you know what? He, it's time. He officially has proven now that he is a part of this team. Prior to that, with that stripe on your helmet, you ain't a part of the team. You're just practicing. You're just there. You're trying to be a part of the team. And so we're going to talk about it. Jeremiah Smith getting it off after what? Four practices? <laughs> what? Never. I've never heard of that. And it is a record. Starting when Urban Meyer started it and going back to Florida, I was at Florida every year. Never has that happened. Four practices, two of them in shorts and t-shirts. Never. Yeah, dog. It's, it's, it's nuts. And I'm ready to fucking lie. And I don't even know. I don't even know if I can lie big enough for it to be a lie. I it's, I just think this receiver group at the top end, right? The, the top four. Yeah. I think has a chance to be, Maybe one of the best that Heartline's ever had. Best assembled, best group of four. I'm just telling you, what, what the coaches told me, multiple coaches, Carnell Tate last year was the best freshman they've ever seen. Jeremiah Smith right now is the best, is be- better than Carnell Tate was, better than Marv was, better than Olave, better than Garrett, better than all of them at this stage. Five practices, like been here for two months, should be a high school senior. He's ahead of all of them. And then you add in Brandon Ennis, who I loved on tape, and I think he did some really good things last year. And then Emeka Egbuka, who was I was told was a first-rounder going into last year. Yeah. Like, those four are going to be unmatched in college football. Unmatched. No one will have four receivers that are as good as those four. I mean, if you think about unmatched, it's going to be an unmatched running back room and an unmatched receiver room, un- unmatched safety room, secondary, probably. Fucking yeah, secondary, secondary, period. Um, you're talking about unmatched <laughs> in a lot of different fucking places. A lot of places. Just need a quarterback. Right. One of these quarterbacks has to be a dude. And if he is, it's going to be a fun season. Whoever wins this quarterback battle is set for life. Oh, God. It's over, dog. But I even I, I put it in the YouTube bio. Like, with this skill on the perimeter, the backfield, and I have faith in Justin Fry with the line, whoever gets the starting job 
is stacked yeah. and set up for success. And the first part of the schedule? Oh, my God. They're playing Akron, Akron Tech, Akron A&M, and then Akron, our women community college. Like, I, I, it's it's going to be beautiful. And I just say a prayer that one of those two quarterbacks takes a step, takes the job, and becomes a fucking dude. Right, because I don't want this quarterback battle to go into the season like it did last year. No, it can't. It can't. It can't. That was ridiculous. And if he, if he was really like on Kyle McCord's dick that hard because of NIL and his daddy and all this other bullshit, he should have just pulled the trigger before the season. Right. Because <clears throat> Devin wasn't going anywhere. No, and it felt like they <gasps> – I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It felt like they just wanted Kyle to have the day. They were like, okay, look, he's a starting quarterback. And then the day just never happened. Yeah, right. They, they were. But yeah. it also kind of reminded me of Harbaugh when you had Cade McMahon and J.J. McCarthy. Right. Like he went into the season like, you know, J.J.'s the guy. But Cade started last year, so I'm going to give him a game and, and I, another game. And I guess because Cade started the year before. Yeah, that's why he had to do it. Right. Ryan didn't have to do it. I agree. Kyle never started nothing. Nothing. Started a game he against Akron. He started his fucking Honda. Right. The only thing he ever started was his Honda. Hondas are pushed to start. Zach, do you want to get a quick word from our partner? We'll be right back it. after this. All right, Menace Army. As we're on this fitness journey, there's a big part of getting being the best version of you. And I found it. We got it. They sent me a bunch of meals. I've already tried it, tested it. It is menace approved. That is called Factor. Factor meals are two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with their restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. They have snacks, smoothies, all kinds of stuff. You can get anywhere from six to 18 meals a week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. It's a must try for the Menace Army. The Menace Army. As we go down this path, towards the best version of us head to factormeals.com slash menace and use code menace 50 to get 50% off that's code menace 50 at factormeals.com slash menace 50 to get 50% off and start these easy meals that are nutritious and healthy and it will help you be the best version of you go check them out i am a testimony to, i have I, I am a testimony to factor i eat one every day after the show when i get home every 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 day Shout out to Factor. Um, a couple of quick updates. Obviously, just reading between the lines and talking to people that we talked to from yesterday. I guess the defense had a really big time day. Um, Jeremiah Smith absolutely went fucking nuts yesterday, which led to the black stripe coming off, which we're going to talk about. The quarterbacks are still rolling reps. I want to ask you, how long can they roll reps for? That means two, two, two. Also, they can do it all spring. I just wonder how you do that in a scrimmage. Oh, you just got to give them drives. Okay. I mean, you're going to have eight, eight to ten drives. Just give them drives. Put them in situations. I mean, you. At some point, I mean, it's not that hard, I don't think. You just rotate the two with the ones, rotate the other two with the twos, and then Aaron Nolan gets the threes when it's time for three scrimmage, right, which is usually after practice. You might do it in the middle as, like, kind of a half time to give the ones and twos a break. I think, I think Julian's saying, uh, is there enough to get? Because think about it. Like, with the ones, you got Devin and Will. Uh, with the twos, are you saying Say and Lincoln? Yeah, Lincoln and Say and, and then and just then give Aaron the threes. Air the threes and, and you can bump Julian down with the threes every now and then. Yeah. To, to, just so – you don't want Aaron Nolan to get – well, he won't. The threes don't get near as many reps as the ones and twos. So it'll all even out. If you did that, if you split the ones between Will Howard and Devin, split the twos between Lincoln and uh, and Julian Sayan, and gave Aaron Nolan the threes, I would bet you at the end of the scrimmage, you had 45 plays apiece. Yeah, 40 big. plays apiece. It's big. And they have so many fields or whatever they could do other stuff with during the week. Yeah, I mean, d during the week, the only, only reason you need other fields is when you're doing a scout team. Okay. Like, when you're going ones-on-ones, on ones, the twos are, are – ones-on-ones, on ones, the twos are watching. Then you go twos-on-twos, twos, the ones are watching. You don't need any other – you just need one. Dog, Jeremiah Smith, four practices, <laughs> lost his black stripe, and this is what Brian Hartline and Brendan had had to say after practice. This is from uh, the Lancer. I love the way he approaches things. I love the way – the questions he asks, I love the, the way he makes mistakes and then corrects mistakes. Uh, it's very veteran-like. I mean, there's so much ball he has to learn. Like, he literally does things that are good. I'm like, do you know why that worked? He goes, Coach, I have no freaking idea. So, like, I'm trying to teach him all of that, why it worked. So then, you know, the consistency at which it works just goes through the roof. And so, uh, but I'm very, you know, excited and proud of the conversations we're currently having, and I'm excited for them to keep going. I feel like Jeremiah is just, I mean, he's definitely, he's a different caliber. When, when, you, when you watch him and how smooth he is and the physical abilities he brings to the game, I feel like he has to play. Some way he has to, he has to play because he, he'll just better the team. I love. Oh, yeah, there it is. 
There it oh, is. Yeah. Boom. We're talking about <laughs> four practices in a guy in Brandon Innes who's fighting for a starting job yeah. after this practice where I guess he went absolutely crazy. And there's a clip circulating around Twitter right now, Zach, of him. What looks like mossing Aaron Scott and is stepping over him like Aaron Scott is Ty Lu yeah. and he is Allen Iverson. <laughs> I, I don't understand how you don't start him day one. Well, I sent a text to one of the, somebody on the support staff. I'm not gonna. I don't like to yeah, use yeah. names because then you. they get no, no, fucking no, no. Don't get anybody called drunk. out. Right, right. I was like, damn, four practices, y'all are soft. Like just joking around. He was like, he said, Coach, you have no idea. This kid went so fucking crazy. We had to. Like, we didn't have a choice. Yeah. I was like, wow. Like, never have I heard that or seen that. Because I'm like, even if he's balling out, like, you want to keep, keep him motivated, make him work for it. He was like, no, I'm telling you, we didn't have a choice. That's how ridiculous he was that day and, and, and has been. And to not have a choice when you know he's getting a lot of reps with the ones right now going up against that defense and to still not have a choice. I mean, it's like I – <laughs> I, I, and I hate doing this, but that's Julio. I'm not going to put that on that kid. But I, I, I don't want to put it on him either, but he's putting it on me for practices. <laughs> like, like what? Like, like what? Here's all I know. He may not develop the, as well as Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jackson Smith and Jigba. He might not develop and, and, Maybe his, he has a lower ceiling than them, which I know is fucking hilarious to say because we know that's not true. But he is much better than any of them were as a freshman. So if you believe he has a high ceiling, you believe Brian Hartline can coach and develop, by his third year, you're talking Heisman maybe? Like, how? what is it? What, what's the ceiling? Uh, I don't know. And I don't want to say he's going to win the Heisman, but like – like I'm ready. Like I, 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 hearing what I heard from the play, and the players always keep it super real. Oh yeah, and the defensive players especially. <laughs> like like Denzel Burke will always just keep it honestly way too real, way too and real, I, and I and I love him. So to hear this coming from them, yeah, is like, oh brother, yeah, we're not talking about someone that's normal. Yeah, Zach, he lost his black stripe before Caleb Downs. <laughs> Wow. Who just was an, a freshman All American at Bama and one of the best freshman safeties we've ever seen, and we got All American Bowl talking about new record twenty twenty four. Jeremiah Smith has officially lost his black stripe, fastest ever in stripe removal. I mean, if you look at the impact freshman, Garrett Wilson was a monster year one in the slot. By the end of but, the year, was a freak, but not not day one. But Chris, and I, I love Garrett. Don't I just it. limit it to receivers. J.K. Dobbins played as played as a freshman. Yeah, he didn't lose it this fast. No, nope. like no one ever has since Urban Meyer started doing black stripes at Florida in 2005. I know that's. I mean, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. And then you can be dramatic and project what are the next three years look like if he's better than anyone else ever was that came through the, through the program at this point. As long as Hartline can coach, this kid's a fucking number one overall pick. He's Keyshawn Johnson, like the next number one overall pick receiver, right? And we hate doing this, dude. I do, but I'm just, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Yeah, you're I'm talking not about the upside of it. I'm just saying like, that's logical. Right. Right? Bro, I'm sitting back and I've never, I've never once uttered this and felt like I haven't had to, but I'm almost sitting back like, damn, I wonder if Emeka should have went. <laughs> you, you feel me? Maybe he should have left. <laughs> yeah. Like, because <laughs> there's a big part of me. The things that America might have to get the fuck out the way so they can start the Florida trio, bro. Just because because it is because here's the thing, bro. I heard that Ennis had a crazy day too. It just got out overshadowed by Jeremiah Smith being not from this fucking world, not from this like, planet. He's a fucking monster. Like being physical, throwing guys at the club and getting wide open. Like I love Marv. Marv was never throwing dudes at the club. Marv's no. fast as shit. Can get open. Great ball skills. Or not not sometimes get open. Great ball skills. All that. <laughs> Jeremiah's throwing dudes at the club and not. Yeah. I'm not talking about like not. He's a dog. He's not throwing Jake Seabirds at the club. He's throwing like first rounders at the club. All I know is this. I'm excited for that group. I'm excited to watch them this year. I'm excited for the quarterbacks to have those weapons. And then in 2025, 
you're going to have the Florida trio, and it's going to be fucking it's, crazy. It's going to be going crazy. Year three for Brandon Ennis, Cardell Tate. Year two for Jeremiah Smith. It's going to go crazy. And year two for Julian saying, right? Oh my goodness, bro! I don't know how I don't know how you're going to be able to get to that three thousand yard mark on the ground, bro, with those receivers. Mm. Depends on the quarterback play. The motherfuckers can't throw it. They ain't going to catch it. No, here's the thing. If you can't throw it, it doesn't matter. I watched Eli Manning for an entire year just close his eyes and throw it to Odell. And Odell was a little guy. Bro, Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah's got to play this year. And if Brian Hartline doesn't rotate, you will never go into South Florida again. Oh, so you know, you'll, be, you'll be locked out of South Florida. Yeah. The whole, the whole area. Because, I, I mean, I, I told Chris, I talked to two different high school coaches. Different schools. Yeah, rival schools. Rival schools. And both of them were like, oh, no, no, no. He's different than anyone we've ever seen down here. I'm like, what? Y'all yeah. had Amari Cooper, Jerry, Judy. Like, what? They're like, dude, I'm telling you, he's just different. Like, athletically, I asked you this morning, is it fair to compare him to, like, a Torrance Gibson type? Yeah. Like, I, just, I mean, just athletically stripped down the receiver skills. Yeah, but but probably a slightly more athletic and more polished. Like, Torrance was just gifted. Yeah, but he didn't know how to change direction. He was kind of awkward. Like he needed, okay, so he I needed didn't, to refine. I didn't, I didn't know he struggled changing direction. I mean, because I just watched him play quarterback, and he was fucking not not with the ball in his hands. Yeah, I was gonna say with the ball in his hands, he was looking like like <laughs> oh. like tall, skinny Mike Vick. Yeah, I mean, but that's a good comparison. Just the difference is athletically absolutely but with similar. The but then with the Mark Cooper's polish, there yeah, you go. Right, like you took this kid Torres Gibson, who's one of the biggest freaks I've ever seen, and you took him at six years old and said you're going to be a receiver, and then mm -hmm. for the next twelve years. He just worked on receiver shit. Yeah, he's you got to get him on the field. I, you know, and gotcha. maybe maybe you know. I, I know Harline doesn't like to rotate, but I don't think you have a choice here. I think by week six against at Oregon, I think he's gonna be starting the starting X. <laughs> I do too. Like I think he's starting X. And honestly, I I've talked to you about it, but I would move Carnell to the Z and I put behind. Fuck it, if this kid is that fucking good and Brian Hartline is that fucking good, he better start game one. Fuck what you what, what you mean? Fuck you mean? <laughs> Fuck you mean? How can he lose when he's already chose? Yeah, how I'm can, just saying. That's what I'm saying. That's it. How can he lose when he's already chose? He can't. I need him to start game one. Fuck that. If he's as good as he is, get his ass ready, Hartline. I want to see that motherfucker game one, play one, trot him out there and make all Buckeye fans go, oh, my God, he's starting. Could he force Ryan Day to go four wide? No. <laughs> that was quick. I mean, you may have a package on third down, but four wide sucks. There's no run game. Yeah, you know, LSU did it. Yeah, and they just threw the fucking ball every yeah. play. They said instead of a handoff, we're just gonna throw it to our running back. Right. <laughs> we have Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's just a short, fat receiver. <laughs> he just he just was too too short to play the slot. Right. Short, <laughs> he's a short, thick receiver. He was wiggling, man. He's not really running, but wiggling. Um, Sonny Styles got asked about his transition to linebacker. He said the the competing feels a little bit better, competing with linebackers instead of DBs. So with the DBs, sometimes it feels like in the weight room, I was expected to win. So when I won, it was like, oh, Sonny won. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they should have been working out with the linebackers the whole time. Oh, for sure. The whole time. Because, like, if I'm, you know, if I'm fucking Jordan Hancock and I'm getting on the bench and it's like we're going for the record today and it's fucking, I look over, I see Sonny on his 23rd rep, it's 225. Like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I'm excited for him this year. This one I found interesting. And for you, <laughs> Jermaine Matthews is transitioning to play some nickel as uh, well this spring. I saw that. And – I think it gives him flexibility. One, I'm sure that that gives him the flexibility to train Jordan Hancock outside because he's going to want to do that some just for NFL value at the very least. And if one of the two corners goes down, Jordan Hancock has to, has to play outside. Mm -hmm. And then Jermaine Matthews has to play inside. And he's never done it. You could roll out Jordan Hancock in the nickel right now. No problem. And play a game. Yeah. So I think it's great for development. And I think it's great for flexibility. Now you have Jermaine Matthews. Played corner for a whole year, playing nickel in the in the spring. When he goes into training camp, he's a hybrid, and you have a ton of flexibility. And I just love the way this defense is doing this, and it's a long season. A long season. You don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like remember Jordan Hancock was the backup nickel to start the year last year, mm -hmm. um, and then you know the more Sunday had to play some will, it, it made sense. But you want to be deep there, and he's good enough. You have to get him on the field somewhere. Yeah, like you, there's you, no doubt. You you uh, you simply have to. Oh, quick note on Jeremiah. I think he might be the best blocker of the group. Huh, also, well, that I'm not gonna. That's criminal for whoever's teaching him how to block. Then 
I'm just saying. like, how do you walk in a room and you're the best blocker coming from South Florida where you really didn't have to block much? Oh, he loved blocking down there. I've seen it. No, I know he liked it, yeah. but they don't, they didn't, they didn't train it as well as a college would, I would assume, right? Yeah. But I'm excited to see some good blocking for the first yeah, time. I want to see him throw somebody out the club. You, <clears throat> you got to play him. You got to play him. Got to. Um, Doug, thank you for the two trick question. It's 100% either way. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> 100% gay either way, that's for sure. <laughs> Austin Spears, thank you for gifting a membership. You are a... He gifted 20. Tw oh, God. 20, 20 memberships. memberships? Austin, what? Shout out to you, Austin. That's fucking awesome. That is awesome. Whoa. I fucked you it up. You skipped over that real quick. Yeah, I think I'm... I think I must be dyslexic. David, thanks for the five. Zach, interested to hear your thoughts on neighbors being ahead of Marv in the draft. Oh, I already read that one. I have Malik Neighbors ahead of Marv in the draft on my list too. Mm -hmm. He just gets he gets more separation. Marv's better than him at a couple of things. I mean, it's you're splitting hairs. I think they're the top two receivers in the draft, both going to be studs. But I just have Malik Neighbors a little bit higher than Marv because in the SEC against better corners, he got more separation. That's my reason. And he said that Chris, Mike Tyson would eat your children. First of all, I don't have any. Second, yeah. I know. People think I I just bon like someone asked how much money would it take for me to get right. in the ring. I said a hundred grand per round. Because obviously it's a high risk, but I'm still stuck on Austin gifting fucking 20 memberships. I what know. A, that's awesome. What a goat. Uh, Twez, thanks for the two. Zesty Zach, bust it down for a G. Ain't nothing desty, zesty over here. <laughs> that is, nothing. That is insane. Ben, thanks for the <laughs> five. Why shouldn't the school that loses their kid to the portal get a payment from the school taking the kid? Could be a way for smaller, smaller programs to make money. <laughs> I will sell you a Caden Proctor. God, our budget's not looking good. See which players we could sell. It's very soccer-like, but it also sounds problematic because yeah. like, the schools also aren't paying these players to begin with. Like, you imagine Ohio State just gets recruits their ass off, and they're like, let's just cash in and have a bad year. Yeah. Like, they just sell everybody, make like $100 million. <laughs> Not even cash in. It's like, Kojo, we're going to go ahead and sell you to Kent. It's like, damn, I don't want to go to Kent. I don't want to go to Kent. <laughs> That's nuts. GMC, thanks for the 10 um whne fans dog 2011 remember that um if not for fickle holding the program together by force of sheer it will could have been much worse luke deserves the head coach job someday thoughts i've said it a hundred times i'll say it every day if you need me to if you hold 2011 against luke fickle you're a fucking idiot yeah. He had he was forced to keep every coach on staff. All those coaches were looking for jobs all year because they knew after the year it was over, they were going to hire somebody and they were all going to be out of jobs. He did the best job anyone could have done to just have some success with a freshman quarterback, all freshman receivers, basically, except for Philly was a sophomore, I think. Like, he did an outstanding job. And to try to discredit him in a future opening at Ohio State football, the head coaching job, is fucking dumb. Absolutely. I would love to have Luke Fickle back as the head coach one day. Yeah, I could not agree more. Avery Dinks for the five. What's the longest someone has kept their black stripe? Man. Oh, we had a receiver in Florida named Nyan Botang. Talented kid from Brooklyn. Soft as shit. He had a stripe on his helmet all training camp. We're going in the season, and he would, like, turn down blocking. He wouldn't block people because he was kind of soft. Urban would add stripes to his helmet. <laughs> he looked like the fucking Cincinnati Bengals by the end of the year. <laughs> and then he transferred. So he kept it forever. Kept it forever. Sometimes guys, it takes some years to lose their uh, black stripe. The kid from Medina lost his black stripe yesterday too. Oh. The walk-on. Walk-on nice. receiver. Played with Drew Aller. On there the back you go. Three. Shout out Medina. R. Shelley, thanks for the five. Sub Z man and Unk just wanted to drop a line. It's been too long. Hope <laughs> all is well with your fams. Also, the Menace Army. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. You're a real one. Chance, thank you for becoming a member. You are a legend. Coach Zach, thanks for the five. Uh, game one, play fade JJ for 75 yards and a touchdown. Shoe may explode. I'm just saying, like, who's the first game? Akron? Is it Akron? Yeah. First play of the game, you got to throw it downfield to that kid. You have to. Can you imagine? What, I mean, as, as dramatic as we just took it, but I think it was pretty logical to, just talking about the potential growth that yeah. this kid could go through. If he scores like an 80-yard touchdown on his first play ever, the first play of the season, oh, my God. The Buckeye fans are going to lose their shit. Bro, if he houses a slant. Oh, even better. Don't throw it downfield. Let him let him do the work. Like, let him show you he can really step <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Ooh-ee. <clears throat> Keel, thanks for the two. 
Uh, what would we get for Kojo? A ten dollar Subway gift card. <laughs> chill, chill. Kojo's a good little player. Brad, thanks for the five. Ten years ago, I said give him five hundred a week. Chess club, band, football, all of it. It gets some. Wouldn't have shit <laughs> watching on delay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it basically, basically, what he's basically saying is, if if ten years ago you said, all right, everyone gets five hundred dollars a week, the players are not even. They would be getting, they would be making what two grand a month, mm -hmm. more than that. Yeah, they would sit mm -hmm. there and be like, "Oh, this is this is dope. This is dope." Like they would even, it would have taken a lot longer for them to get to this place we're in now because mm -hmm. they would have been satisfied. But I think because they got starved, it's like, yeah, if they got starved and then they got dropped off at Golden Corral, yeah, and got told to be respectful. Right. Like, it's like you fucking didn't feed your dog for three days and then you just open up a meat locker and sat him in it. <laughs> a meat locker. Um, I do want to get a quick word from our partner, Zach, and then come back after this. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army. It's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cash each. Free money for March Madness. Um, here is a Menace General's question from Emily. She wants to know, do players get upset when they're being interviewed to answer question after question about someone else, especially in their position group? Kind of feel for these kids so many questions about Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't watch the full interviews. I just saw, like, the clips. Uh, so I doubt they asked a ton of questions about Jeremiah Smith. They probably just asked one question. But – I don't think they care. I mean, that's their friend. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they sit in the same meeting room, and it's like, they'd be like someone asking me, like, when I was coaching, they're like, hey, what do you think of Stud? How's Stud doing? I'm like, I'll talk about Stud all day. Great dude. Or Kevin Wilson or Ryan Day. Like, they don't look at it like that. Um, Coach Zach wants to know, what was Braxton like behind the scenes? Knew him in high school, always the life of the party in any room he walked in back then. Yeah, I mean, once Braxton became a superstar, he was a little different in public right like even now like when, we, when braxton and i did tailgates together we would always go out after braxton would go home <laughs> like mm -hmm. like and his, his his girl would come with us and we would all like party drink whatever hang out he's a little more reserved he's now, more reserved but he also i mean he's funny as shit smart as shit and he's 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 got a great personality he just is a little more reserved now that once he became a superstar yeah, he baked the fuck out of me at that michigan state tailgate. oh yeah and we'll forget that. Um, Ryan Day's cousin wants to know, <laughs> what are the chances that by the Oregon game, Jeremiah Smith is our number one wide receiver? Did you see the pick of him standing next to a Mecca <laughs> and Brandon Ennis? Shit's unfair. Yes. Um, I think we already touched on I think he, I think he, he's got a chance to be. Yeah. If if all this shit is true, I mean, I haven't seen him in college yet. So that's the only my only hang up. I also do think that Ryan Day, the Ryan Day offense naturally favors the slot a little more mm. for number one wide receiver. I mean, I, I'll never forget, like, I felt like Garrett Wilson was better than JSN, but JSN in that slot role was able to really feast. Yeah, um, and, but we don't know what Chip Kelly's going to yeah. bring to the table, right? Right. And even, even the year before, I know it wasn't Chip Kelly, but even the year before, like, I, I think we can both agree that Marv was a better receiver than Emeka, but Mech, they had the same amount of yards because yeah. that offense is so slot friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if that if that makes sense, I, I don't know if there's been much merit behind it, but I have noticed that about Ryan Day offenses. Yeah. Um, Don B, thanks for the ten, bro. Some of y'all dudes in the chat are super zesty today, giving Freaky Friday a new meaning. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, man, I don't judge. Y'all live your life. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, thanks for the five. Big Ten about to be the big tween soon. Why is Kirk Barton in the scoop not giving Devin Brown a chance like the rest of the crazy fan base? I don't have an answer to that. I mean, like, like, like optically, I mean, it, it's a pretty safe bet to say, well, I mean, Will Howard got a million dollars. He transferred in. Will Howard's like the new car. Yeah. It's like, 
Oh, it's a new car. Everyone wants to talk about the new car. It's a hot topic. You got a new car. That new car. It's brand new. Only a couple miles. New car, new car, new car. Then when a push comes to shove, you're like, damn, that truck's fucking sweet. It's actually better than the new car. Yeah. But it's just been here. We already knew about it. We already talked about it. A lot of these shows are just talking about Will Howard because that's new. And people want to hear about new things. I don't give a fuck. I'm just talking about it like a coach would and say, okay, they're in a competition now. This new guy and this guy that was here last year are competing. You know the phrase, the, the best pussy is new pussy? <laughs> I don't I don't agree with that statement. I'm just saying the phrase. I heard it yes. when I was in college. This guy would always say, and he was always, he'd, he'd always be like, you know, like, you always want some new pussy, but you always want to, like, your girl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Will Howard is. The new new. But, you know, you never know what you're missing until, you know, you know <coughs> someone doesn't cook and clean and take care of everything and, like, take care, you know, <laughs> be the mother of the offense. Uh, my guy, Cam, thank you for the five and two more. Penn State sneakily a tougher game than Oregon this year. I think there's a chance it is. I do, too. I mean, those are the two games, both on the road. What, two weeks apart, I think. Um both of them are going to have really good quarterbacks. I mean, Drew Aller's got to show me on the field, but I believe my people at Penn State when they when they talk about him. And Drew was good, just not against, like, Ohio State. He secondary. didn't throw the ball down the field worth a fuck. That's no. just the reality. He wasn't any good at that, which is problematic. So, I, he was he was good, okay, last year. And I think his ceiling's really high. I think he's got a chance to be really good. So, it's it's both are going to be tough. But there's a chance Penn State's tougher with those running backs. And if Drew Aller is what I hear he is, and that that brand of football for sure. But OSU's got that motherfucking thing on them. They do. That defense. They do. They really suffocate. 3 0 game like LSU Bama back in the day. <laughs> right. That shit pissed me off, but I did like watching it. I just felt it just felt like comedy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Jason, thank you for the 10. Coach and Chris, why can't NIL deals pay players based on every semester they're enrolled rather than giving them the bag up front? I'm sure they could structure it that way. I think a lot of times they try to, but it's like everyone's always upping the score, right? Yeah. It's like, well, they they look, they don't trust you. Over here at AM, we'll just keep it a whole bag up front. Yeah. We're not gonna make you wait and prove it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, just the recruiting tools. Texas Buckeye, thanks for the five. Zach, how many times would you have had to change your shorts coaching Jeremiah Smith? I don't know. I gotta, see, I gotta see him first. Yeah, Urban would have lost his mind. Oh my bro. god, Are you kidding me? Lost it. Urban would have lost it. Buckeye Brazy, member of Buckeye Brazy. Thanks for the five. What's up, Menace Army? Check out the 2014 recruiting class. That class was fucking stacked. I think we went through it not we too long ago. It. They were they were nuts. Nuts. They were nuts. Um, Speed. Thanks for the two. Want to see four receivers because I know no one will be able to cover them. Yeah, there's no doubt. I'm saying passing situations. Two minute drill. All in. Mm -hmm. Third and eight, all in. Um, there's a great question on Twitter that I wanted to ask you. Do you think that the next great Ohio State offensive lineman is currently on this roster? Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of high praises about Luke Montgomery last mm -hmm. year, competed as a freshman. Um, I think Donovan Jackson's a, a really good one. We'll see what he what his ceiling is this year. But I I don't know that. It is definitely an interesting one. And then Mitch wanted to know, what is the best and most competitive way to split up the first team QB reps? And what sort of format are you guys hoping to see for the spring game? I, I think I, I just went through how to split up the quarterback reps. Yeah. Those the top two kids get the first team. The next two kids get the second team. And the, the fifth quarterback gets the third team who they usually get half as many reps. So it'll, it'll even itself out pretty well. I want to see them do it. Bring back the draft. Yeah. For uh for the spring game. I know it's for the fans though. Like I'd love to have like well, how did Devin Brown like draft and see who values what? Yeah, they won't do that shit. <laughs> well, you know what I would do? I'm not drafting a receiver. At going, all? No, I'm going all offensive line, maybe because look, by the time Will Howard drafts whatever receivers he want, like I still feel good because he can only draft three. I still got either BI, like a BI at Mecca, yeah, like Ballard. Like I, I can well, make, the it, thing, I can make and it work. The, and and if I have better is, protection, doesn't matter. When they do the draft. It's not just you picking a player and waiting, right? When you pick a player, the starting X, the other team automatically gets the backup X, right? Oh. Because you, the receiver coach is like, I have to have yeah. the right players in the right positions. So if you go say, all right, I'm taking Travion Henderson, the other team's getting Quinshawn Judkins. And this. guess what? Neither of them are playing. <laughs> so don't waste your draft pick on them. So, so that's why I'm saying I'm just taking all O line. Yeah, like I'll, I'll take the whole starting O line. And I, usually, I can make usually that's work. that's one pick, right? Oh, okay. And in a quarterback battle, it's different, but 
typically when there's a starting court, JT Barrett's there, he's getting the first O-line. Okay. You're not even drafting that. All you're drafting is really skill players. Got you. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, one more super chat, Zach, then we're going to get out of here and enjoy our uh, our Friday. And go fucking dog cuss a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we don't have any more super chats. That's it. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Love that. Menace Army, bomb ass week. Great week. Went crazy this week. I want you to have a great weekend. Enjoy it, man. It's starting. The weather's starting to turn. It's a beautiful day to have a beautiful day. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Menace out.